morning. It is 5.27 a.m. and I'm not going to the airport. And I say that pretty assertively because, in my opinion, that is the only usual reason to justify being up at such a stupid hour. But I am doing my second session of my new Red On program, prepping me for my crazy 15 mile, 85 kilo or 187 pound yoke carry uh, coming up on the 5th of October. So we're about 12 weeks out. This is the first week of the program after kind of doing some testing stuff last week. Uh, I did an absolutely disgusting lower body, like genuinely miserable lower body session yesterday at like 8 p.m. So basically nine hours ago. <laughs> And, uh, and this morning, the reason I'm up super early is I'm going to do my first yoke session of the, um, of the program. And it gets extremely hot here and it gets up to like 40 degrees in the day. Hence the reason I'm up absurdly flipping early. Let's get some fluids in me. Let's do a little bit of kind of light mobility work to flush through and flush out everything from last night. And um, then let's get cracking. So provisional game plan for today, it is two miles of yoke with two miles of active recovery in the middle. So what they've programmed for me in there is the lap that is basically where we'll be doing the stuff in a second uh, is just shy of 400 meters, it's like 380 meters or something. So basically one yoke lap, one active recovery run. We'll see how much of that's running uh, and how much of it is plodding slash bimbling. I reckon this whole thing, I'm going to give myself a target time. Oh, it's so difficult because I'm not used to training in the mornings. My legs are absolutely flipping battered from a session that I did like eight hours ago. Um, so maybe one hour five, I don't know, one hour five, one hour ten. Something like that should be about right, I think. But right now it's basically about frequency. I've just got to make sure that at least twice a week I'm getting that flipping disgusting metal demon on my back and actually getting some miles in. You're excited for me? Yes. <laughs> if I get tired, are you gonna are you gonna tag in and do some of it for me? Yes. Yes. How much do you weigh? 49. 49 kilos. <laughs> yeah. A solid asset. So one of the things that's definitely changed now, kind of as I've got more into my 30s, is the fact that a comprehensive warm-up, or at least something as a warm-up, is something that I just can't sacrifice. So even if I feel as I'm against the clock, like it's like 6.15 now, I'll be ready to go in a few minutes. But taking an extra five minutes to basically do a little bit of foam rolling and some kind of like core and back care with like the McGill Big Three, which is what I'll be doing in a second. It doesn't matter if I'm against the clock, I would rather shave off a little bit of a session than shave off that stuff because I just don't trust my body to be able to stay in one flipping solid piece if I don't do that. So a few minutes of foam rolling for the legs, especially after last night's workout. Last night's absolutely killer, killer single leg workout. For anyone working with Mike Chadwick and the team, if after the first session you're basically not thinking about them going, fuck you, you probably didn't do the session right. Eight laps with the yoke. Eight laps run. Three, two, one. May God have mercy on myself. So with the active recovery laps, I think the key is, especially as it's literally about to get hotter, don't go out too hot. So making sure that I do literally just kind of have a bit of a plod around the course. Uh, so the goal is not to get the session done with the active recovery laps as quick as possible as such. It's basically to always look through the lens of what's the actual objective of the session. 
Well, the objective of the session is to get good quality yoke work done. And if right now, having some active recovery between laps is the key, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sprint these little running sections. This is where I'm kind of getting my breath back, decompressing my spine a little bit, sipping on some fluids throughout, and then going again. Twenty-five percent there. Two laps of each. Straight into the next one. strategy around this like 380 meter course is always to do about 250 260 and I know each direction where to stop now rest for about kind of 10 15 20 seconds and then finish off and then basically that just allows me enough kind of recovery that I effectively just go straight into the run it's an odd strategy but it seems to work for me feeling pretty good on the active recovery lap so now I'm basically just jogging my way into halfway. It's currently 26.30. So I'm way ahead of time. But actually I don't think I went off too hot. I think I've been fairly kind of conservative the whole time. So new target is definitely sub 60. Finish round six. It's a sweat in my eyes, man. It's fucking horrible. Seventy five percent there. Just dried my face which I'm confident will last about 80 fucking metres and then it'll be this wet through again. starting to feel it now man halfway through lap seven i'm way ahead of time it's just it's the fucking heat man obviously as i get more fatigued and as the heat permeates through it also is hotter <clears throat> but a total of about 500 and a bit yoke left half a mile run it's mental that i need a break before between that but it's just time under tension man like it's not about the distance with the yoke, it's about how long you've got it on your fucking back for.
so hot. I literally couldn't even manage another 20 meters. Fuck no. <clears throat> That's so hard. Fifty-six, thirty-nine. Jesus Christ. That got so much harder the last two, so that was about average of seven minutes per yoke lap and run lap for the first six and the last two rounds of just slow down to probably about eight. So not too much, but considering as far as the event goes, this is obviously still very early on. Uh, but I'm happy with that, man. I'll give a proper debrief when I put my lungs back in my fucking body. <sighs> a few hours have passed. I've had a lemonade and a chocolate milkshake. I feel like a weird pregnant woman. Those are like two very niche cravings that I had, but I allowed myself to indulge. So, a few hours have passed. It's about 9.30 a.m. here now. Had a shower. My, my legs are actually feeling okay. My intercostal actually weirdly kind of like pinged on the second uh, yoke lap. And interestingly, it was fine during all the yoke carries, but it kind of hurt when I was breathing when I was running. So I've just sat down on a chair for an hour, had a, had a, had a sales call, and then stood up and I was like, oh my God. But overall, I'm flipping over the moon with how that was actually. I think it was just under two miles, because obviously the track is just under two miles by, or just under 400 meters by about 20 meters each or something. Um, so it's just under two miles of each. But overall, the fact that I got that done in like 56, I was expecting it to be done in about 105. But the one thing is it makes me a little bit cautious, a little bit concerned about building up my mileage whilst I'm here in Cyprus. Um, basically just because of the heat, because it gets so hot so quickly, like it's, even by 7 a.m., like I started at whatever, it was like 6.25 or something I started this morning. It's 30 degrees by seven. And it's just like, that's a lot, man. Your body's carrying that weight, you know, like the amount of heat that your body's producing is just absolutely flipping mental. But really, really happy with how that went overall. So now I've had my first hour of coaching and all of the other stuff that I've done. <laughs> oh, that intercostal's brutal. I now can finish off the vlog by indulging in my one and only beautiful cup of coffee of the day.